Hey everybody, the Steam Deck client and SteamOS have received massive updates and they're the biggest updates the deck has received since its initial launch. This is massive and it's a bundle of new features, some of which like the lock screen, the community has been eagerly awaiting. So in this video, we're going to go over each feature and what they mean for the Steam Deck. But first, I wanna thank my amazing patrons, including Marcus Batson, one of my top tier Singularity members. It's because of people like Marcus that this show continues to grow. If you believe in the work that I'm doing and you wanna help this show grow, you can use the links below to pledge your monthly support. And thank you. Now, if you're not familiar, the Steam Deck actually consists of three distinct software components. The first is the client. The client is just like you're familiar with on the desktop. When you start up Steam, that's the client. These updates happen frequently and only require the restart of the Steam client in order to be applied. On the Steam Deck, game mode is basically just Steam running in Steam Deck mode. So when I talk about a client update, that's what I'm talking about. Steam is getting an update. Then there are SteamOS updates. Now you can think of these like you would a uh, Linux, a Mac OS, or a Windows update. These are upgrades to the operating system and usually require the system to be entirely rebooted. These updates happen less frequently, less than once a month. This can include a new Linux kernel, new hardware drivers for the Steam Deck's hardware, and new software updates that Steam and other apps rely on. Finally, there are firmware updates. This is just like updating the BIOS on your motherboard on your desktop, though it's all handled for you by the Steam update pipeline. Firmware updates can unlock new hardware features. They can update the firmware on embedded devices like the screen, the controller, Wi-Fi module, and more. These occur far less frequently, and depending on what firmware is being updated, a reboot of the deck may or may not be required. So with this update, we not only got a new client upgrade, but we also got an OS upgrade and firmware updates to go along with it. This is the first upgrade of this scope and kind for the Steam Deck since it's launched, and it has brought a bevy of new features, so let's dig into them. First up, we're gonna talk about the firmware and OS upgrades. Now, Valve's patch notes did not specify which is which, so I'm gonna use educated guesses to categorize them, but we do know that there were firmware upgrades due to the official Twitter account of Steam Deck saying that there were firmware upgrades in this release. So first, let's talk about what I think are firmware upgrades. The charging LED will now dim after being plugged in. Now, Valve says that this is to make the power LED less annoying in a dark room, and I can confirm that it was pretty annoying before this update. Uh, it also increased compatibility with Type-C docks and chargers, which is important because there has been reports of certain docks and certain chargers ending up bricking the USB port on the device, which is not good. So hopefully this upgrade will fix those problems. Next up, FTPM support has been added to the Steam Deck CPU. This is something that would have to have been done as a firmware upgrade for the CPU. But of note here is FTPM being enabled in the CPU will allow end users to downgrade their system to running Windows 11 instead of SteamOS. All right, so next up is OS upgrades. Now there's messaging in the deck now that will warn the user if a charger doesn't supply enough power to charge the actual device. This is really important as I've seen a lot of people say that an 18 volt charger will actually charge the device while you're playing it. And that's not true. Uh, you need a 45 watt power delivery charger in order to, uh, to run the Steam Deck. Um, you can charge uh, the Steam Deck with like an 18 watt phone charger or a 15 watt phone charger, but that's only if the device is off. There's now an uncapped frame rate option in the quick access menu, uh, which will allow uncapped frame rates. That's pretty awesome, as before you were limited to 60 FPS as a maximum. Uh, Valve also added an experimental option called half rate shading in the performance menu, which forces two by two variable rate shading into existing games in order to save power. Though I have seen that this causes some visual artifacts. And Valve also fixed several other issues, including touchscreen unresponsiveness during certain boot scenarios, improved battery life in quote, idle or very low usage scenarios, booting from an SD card incompatibilities, ACPI errors, and further stability improvements. So now that we've got the firmware and the OS stuff out of the way, let's talk about the massive client update. The first thing that I wanna hit on here is a new Deck UI native achievement section. This makes navigating your achievements much easier and a much smoother experience as it's no longer using the built-in Steam web browser. The new achievements page makes viewing your achievements so much easier and more responsive. You can also compare your achievements to your friends, which is a nice feature here. 
And if you recall in one of my previous features and fixes videos, uh, this, is a, this is an update that I've been waiting for for a while at this point. Though I do think Valve could stand to make this section directly accessible from the Steam overlay rather than navigating to the game's library page and then going to the Your Stuff tab and then choosing achievements. Now, if you're enjoying this video, make sure that you hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the cool stuff that we're doing here on the channel. I'm shooting for 100,000 subscribers by this summer, and I think with your help, we can do this. And thank you. All right, next up, Valve added a fix for the micro SD card formatting process. Now, I've seen several users on the subreddit complaining about the deck never completing a micro SD card format or doing it very slowly. This is because of scammy SD cards that report to the OS a larger capacity than they are actually capable of storing. Why would an SD card lie about its storage capacity? It's pretty simple. It's to rip people off. But these scammy SD cards would actually cause issues with the deck where it wouldn't complete or would take a very long time to format the disk. The formatting process here now double checks to ensure that the advertised and actual capacity match. And if they don't, it'll warn the user. Next up, Valve has added localized keyboards for 21 languages and layouts, most of which are for regions that the deck is not currently available in yet. But this does give hope to those regions that maybe sometime soon the deck will be available for them to order. You can activate multiple keyboards by going into settings, keyboard, and then active keyboards. And then you can switch the current keyboard using the globe key in the virtual keyboard. Next up is a feature I've been waiting for for a while, multiple window support for apps. Now, this isn't the same thing as having a desktop. Instead, the user now has control over which window is in focus from within a single app. This is an important feature as some games will spawn multiple windows, especially in a launcher. It's also useful for web browsers and other apps like that. But I would like to see Valve actually add a new key combo here, Steam or the quick access menu and the view button or what we old school gamers used to call the select button. What I'd like to see this button do is essentially work like Alt-Tab between open windows. That would be so handy and really useful here. Other small fixes to the client include the friend request experience has been streamlined by combining the add friends and pending requests into a single page. A fix for the Steam and quick access buttons being unusable when streaming a game through remote play from your PC. More performance improvements for players with a very large game library. And finally, the biggest update that so many people have been waiting for, a lock screen. That's right, the lock screen has finally arrived for the Steam Deck. So the lock screen requires a six digit pin, which is actually really cool to see as it's much more secure than a four digit pin. However, each number is actually mapped to a button on the controller. This will allow owners to lock their devices, but it will also allow them to develop muscle memory to unlock their devices very quickly. Users can activate the lock screen and also choose when and where it displays. There are currently three options. On system wake and power up, before showing login screen, and when switching to desktop mode. This is certainly a welcome inclusion and it's great to see. I know the entire community is rejoicing about this. Well, that's the entire update in a nutshell. What do you think about this massive Steam Deck upgrade? What features would you like to see on the Steam Deck in the future? Get in the comments and let me know. I would love to hear from you. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and found it informative. If you did, hit that like button and thank you for watching. I wanna give a special shout out to my friends on Patreon and my YouTube members. It's because of them that I'm able to continue to evolve this channel and make it into what it is today. If you believe in the work that I'm doing and you wanna help this channel grow, you can join the Linux Warriors with the links below. At certain tiers, you can even get your name listed over here. That's gonna do it for this video though. Thank you so much for watching. Have a blessed day and I'll see you guys in the next one.